The following program is made possible by the faithful friends and supporters of Higher Aim. Happy Easter. I am so glad that you have tuned in today because this is going to be one fabulous day. It's Easter. Jesus is alive. And that's exactly what we are talking about. Stay tuned. I need to read to you this wonderful story out of Matthew's account, starting there in verse 1 of chapter 28. Why don't you follow along with me? Here's what the Scripture says. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so terrified or afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What a great passage of Scripture. In fact, this passage that we have read this morning will be read in churches all across the world as we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the grave. I need to tell you these five things that God has placed on my heart. And I, and I really believe if you will take them to your heart, they could actually change your perspective from this point on, a literal turning in your life. The very first thing I want to share with you is simply this. The resurrection makes a difference when you lose someone you love. Let me say it one more time. The resurrection makes a difference when you lose someone you love. Listen to what Paul would write in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 through 18. For if the dead are not raised then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If our hope in Christ is for this life alone, we are to be pitied more than all men. But (laughs) Christ has indeed been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. What a powerful passage. You know, I've got to be honest with you and tell you this has been undoubtedly one of the most difficult years in my family. Earlier, I lost uh, the man who God placed in my life that salvaged my life and was, for all practical purpose, uh, my surrogate dad. I shot my first deer sitting in his lap when I was 12 years old. He was the one responsible for pointing me to Christ. I had prayed that in those moments where he was lingering between this life and the next, that God would allow me to be there when he passed. And I was. I was the only one in the room. And I had the privilege, the honor, to close his eyes 
as he met Jesus face to face. The man who had changed my life, I got to be there when he met the life changer face to face. Uh, as I'm sharing this with you, I, I still feel that pain. And it wasn't very long after that that my precious mother-in-law, the best mother-in-law a son-in-law could ever have, after months and months of battling uh, cancer of the brain, would slip into glory. This wonderful woman who took such wonderful care of her body, who was a health food nut and walked with Jesus intimately, would succumb to, to cancer. It left a hole in our family. It still does, and it still hurts. I know that I'm talking to many of you, not only you who are watching my television, but you who are here with us today, and this has been a difficult year for you. And you come to Easter, and you hear a message of the resurrection, and, and you know deep down inside that the life that is to come still gives you questions, and you don't understand it, but let me tell you something, it does make a difference. When you lose someone you love and they are a follower of Christ, you know what? It is not goodbye. It's just see you later. And even though they physically are out of your presence and you no longer can hear their voice face to face in the present time, in the present tense, one day you will. And honestly, that's what's going to make heaven a whole lot sweeter. So does the resurrection make a difference? You bet it does. It makes a difference when you lose someone you love. Allow me to share with you a great verse. In fact, I have never done a graveside saying goodbye with a family where I have not read this fabulous passage out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Now, allow me to share it with you now. Brothers and sisters, this is Paul writing, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him, according to the Lord's own word. We tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Man, I, I need to tell you, just by reading that passage encourages me. The next time I will see Doug Cochran. The next time I will see Aldine Bassanio, these two people who have made such an impact on my life and my family, it will be in the clouds, the Bible says, and I'll meet Jesus there too if I am left on this planet when Jesus returns. You see, the Bible tells us that God doesn't leave anything halfway done. And regardless of what state your loved one is in, when Jesus comes, if they know Christ, God will give them a brand new body. They will come with Christ, and they will be changed. That new resurrection body will be totally complete at, at that moment in time. And we who are still alive, we will be snatched away with a violent force off this planet. Now, I know that sounds a little bit like sci-fi, but the real truth is 
It's spiritual. It's real. And that's a promise. Just as God created you physically, He is going to redeem you physically. That is a good word. That gives us hope. So therefore, I need to tell you this. Write this down. The resurrection makes a difference when you lose someone you love. It causes you to think about death, dying, and what's next in a different way as never before. There's another thing I want to share with you, and, and it's this. The resurrection makes a difference when you are looking for answers. First of, of those questions is, do you want to follow Jesus or not? I, I know that on Easter, that's the time that people who haven't been to church, if they're going to go to church, well, they show up at church. And so, if you're watching television and today you felt like, you know, I need to watch a spiritual program because it's Easter, or you actually are here in this church today and you really don't know Christ, but you're just coming because maybe someone invited you, or you're watching today because you, you felt a nudge on the inside and you have not yet followed Christ because you're still looking for answers, I, I've got a good word for you. The resurrection makes a difference when you're looking for answers. You see, Christianity rises and falls on the validity of the resurrection. What Jesus did on the cross for you and me, shedding his blood to cover all of our sins is validated because he broke death's change, and no one has ever done that. And if you're looking for answers, whether or not you should be a follower of Christ or not, you need to be looking at the empty tomb. Now, I know that, honestly, there have been theories about uh, uh, the, the tomb. Uh, some have said, well, when the ladies in this story that we first read out of Matthew 28 went to the tomb, they they were so overcome with grief th that they didn't remember where he was buried. Uh, come on. You know if your mother has passed or your father has passed or a friend has passed, you see in your mind even now exactly where they're buried. You know exactly where they are, don't you? Yeah, you do. Do you think that these ladies would become forgetful of where they had laid the body of Christ just a few days before? No way. There's, there's also another theory that uh, it was a hallucination, that when they are reporting that Jesus came alive again, all of them were just hallucinating because they wanted to see him. Well, if indeed that was true, there was a whole lot of mass hallucination going on. In fact, the Scripture tells us in one of the post-resurrection appearances that he appeared before 500. Now, that's a serious mass hallucination. But the Bible also tells us that even those who saw, some believed, some doubted what they were seeing. <laughs> Sometimes seeing is not necessarily believing. Uh, that doesn't even hold water here. Or that uh, the disciples just lied and, and just um, tried to sustain the ministry of Jesus. Uh, you, you need to um, think about that for a moment. The cross made the disciples cowards. The only one that made it to the cross other than his parents and a few ladies, uh, uh, Jesus' mother, Mary, specifically, was John. He was the youngest of the disciples. Everybody else had scattered. In fact, the Bible tells us later that they were locking the doors. They wouldn't even go out in public. They were afraid that they would be next. That doesn't sound like somebody who is concocting a, a story to sustain a ministry. That doesn't make sense either. The other uh, uh, theory uh, I get tickled about, and, and it's called the swoon theory, and here it was. Jesus, after being tortured with unbelievable blood loss, his back ripped to shreds, after being nailed to a cross, dying between two thieves, that somehow or another, after they ripped his body off of that cross and they applied these ointments and burial clothes to Jesus and laid him in the tomb, 
and rolled this huge stone in front of it and had a Roman guard in front of it that somehow or another, in the cool of the night, Jesus revived. He, because he literally wasn't dead. He broke the grave clothes, ripped them off, rolled back this giant stone, overpowered the guards, and walked on out the door. <laughs> yeah, I've got to say, if you believe that, I've got to ask the question, what are you smoking? Come on, that doesn't even make sense. But that has been one of those theories. Let me just tell you something. If you are not a follower of Christ, I want you to be intellectually honest. I mean, you want the facts, Jack? Then get into the Word of God, do some research as to what Jesus did, what he was about, who he was, how he died, and how he came alive again. But you see, it's more than just facts you need. You need an encounter with Christ. And I pray the resurrection will make a difference in your life, not only intellectually, academically, but spiritually. You see, it also when, happens that when you're looking for answers, the resurrection does make a difference as to what our heavenly bodies will look like. This ought to get you excited <laughs> because after Jesus was resurrected from the grave, he would appear to the ladies there in the garden. Uh, at first, they thought he was a gardener. How would they miss him? Well, probably first they weren't expecting him, but undoubtedly that resurrection body is enough like our physical bodies, but enough different from our physical bodies. Though we are still the same person, there are some, apparently, some improvements. And I don't know about you, but I could use some improvements. That's what you can look forward to. Some of us, well, we won't have gray hair. Some of us, we will actually have hair. Uh, regardless, uh, that resurrection body is a fabulous body. Uh, not only that, but uh, one of the resurrection experiences, uh, as I alluded to a while ago, Jesus comes behind locked doors and appears with the disciples. Whoa, what do you think about that? You're going, how did that happen? That's almost kind of like a Star Trek beam me up Scotty kind of mentality there. All of a sudden, they're meeting, they're afraid, and Jesus appears in their midst. That tells us that the resurrection body, well, no locked doors. There are no physical boundaries. In fact, the Bible tells us also that when Jesus left this planet, he rose and disappeared in the clouds. So that's flight. That's flight. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to fly like Peter Pan. One day, I'm going to get to, and so are you if you know Christ. Th this is exciting. There is nothing that is going to limit you in the resurrection. If you've got questions, you've got answers, oh, uh, and you need answers, well, the resurrection will give you all that you need. There's another thing I want to share with you, and that is simply this. The resurrection makes a difference when you need the power to live in holiness. And that's exactly what you and I need. We need the power to live in holiness. I need to hurry and tell you this, but I want you to listen quick because there in uh, Romans, I want to read to you this wonderful passage. <clears throat> in verse 8, or chapter 8, here's what it says. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. By, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. That's the same word for Daddy. I want to share with you just a couple of thoughts very quickly. That passage that I've read to you tells us that as believers, 
You have resurrection power. The very power that raised Jesus from the dead actually lives inside your body. You go, I don't feel like that. It doesn't make any difference what you feel. What does make a difference is what God's Word says. You have resurrection power inside of you to change how you think, to change how you live, to empower you to live in holiness. That, that tells us that fact there in verse 11. Verse 12 says that you and I have an obligation to live not by the flesh, but by the Spirit. Maybe the reason we don't feel the resurrection power in our lives alive and well is because we're more in touch with the flesh than we are with the Spirit. That's a word for all of us to think about. And then again in verse 13, it says, you and I really have an option, whether we are going to choose to live a flesh life drawn by what we want and the desires of our flesh, the natural man, or we have the option of choosing to live in the Spirit. And when you live in the Spirit, you accomplish what God wants in your life. And that is very, very important. You see, the resurrection does make a difference. It makes a difference because now, because Jesus died for you on the cross and he came alive again, you are adopted as sons. You are a son of God. And you and I now have the freedom to live without fear, without slavery, but in complete dependence upon the Father where we cry out, Father, Abba, Daddy. You see, the resurrection makes a difference as to how you're really going to live. And that's very, very important. I pray you'll grab hold of that. I, I've got so many different stories to tell you, but we, we don't have a lot of time here. But I, I've got a, another thing I need to share with you, and that is this. The resurrection makes a difference when you are seeking purpose. I mean, what are you about? What, what do you want to accomplish in your life? What, where are you headed? I know that uh, in recent years, there are many churches that have tried to come up with new pithy sayings as to our purpose and our mission statement, what we are to be about. And you and I need to know that the Bible tells us that we are to be totally aligned with God's purpose. And his purpose for us, according to the Great Commission, is to make disciples of all nations. That's our purpose. That's what we're all about as a church. And that's what this broadcast is all about to invite you to become a, a follower, a disciple, which means a following one of Jesus Christ. But the problem is that a lot of people don't know exactly where they're going. I, I came across a story uh, that I remember reading years ago about Albert Einstein, that, that wonderful scientist of yesteryear, who was taking a train. And quite frankly, on this train, he had forgotten his ticket. He did not remember where... Uh, it was, and so as the conductor came, noticing that everybody recognized him, the conductor recognized him, uh, he saw him fumbling for his ticket, trying to find it. And so he asked him, what's the problem? He, s he said, Mr. Einstein, everyone knows who you are. I know who you are. Uh, don't worry about your ticket. And Albert Einstein looked at him and said, well, I know who I am, too. That's not the problem. I just don't remember where I'm going. And that's exactly where a lot of people are. They don't know where they're going. They're on the train. They're living life, but they don't know where they're going or what the purpose of their life really is. The purpose of your life, the purpose of my life, the purpose of this church, the purpose of your church ought to be to make disciples of all nations. That's a global, worldwide commission, and that is very, very important. But I'm going to give you one last word, and it's simply this. The resurrection makes a difference when you need hope. There are a lot of people who live without hope, who somehow or another feel like, I can't go another day. There's emptiness. I don't know what I'm to do. There's emptiness. I don't even know what I'm living for. There's emptiness. It's been said that there is a God-shaped vacuum in all of us that only God himself can meet. You know what the resurrection says? <clears throat> the resurrection says, this life is not all there is, so stop living for this life alone. The resurrection says the best is yet to come. In just a moment, Dr. Dodd will return with a closing thought. 
As we celebrate this season, we're reminded that of all the recorded events in history, the resurrection is the most significant. Because of the resurrection, we have the hope of eternity. We've created a special card highlighting the difference the resurrection makes. You can use this handy guide as a bookmark for your Bible or even place it on your refrigerator. To receive The Difference the Resurrection Makes free of charge, call the number on your screen. The real question that I need to ask you today is, is the resurrection making a difference in your life? I mean, seriously. So if it's not, then one of a couple of things is the issue. Number one, maybe just maybe you have never had that experience where you have prayed to receive Christ as Lord of your life. You don't have resurrection power on the inside because Jesus, well, he's more a force from the outside in your life, but it doesn't have to be like that. Today, I wanna to invite you to call us. Uh, we have people who are standing by right now, loving Christian uh, prayer warriors who would consider it an honor to lead you to pray to receive Christ. Or, or maybe there's another thing. You've already given your life to Christ, but when well, you're struggling with your flesh more than living in the power of the Spirit, and maybe just maybe God has allowed you to listen to this message today so that there could be a new beginning push the reset button in your life to where you could really deal with sin and get free from its shackles on your heart and your life. Call us right now. Those very same people who want to lead people to pray to receive Christ want to pray for you. Or maybe you're just going through a difficult time right now. You're lined up with Christ, but you just need somebody with skin on to pray for you. Call us. We're right here. And by the way, I want to invite you to go to our website at higheraim.org and sign up for My Higher Aim. It is a daily devotional uh, that I write along with several of our team members to encourage you. And it will show up in your email box every day. And you can unsubscribe uh, just as easily as you can subscribe. So. I would love to stay connected with you. Call us, connect with us online, and remember, the resurrection does make a difference. Thank you for joining us on Higher Aim. Have you been encouraged by what you've heard today? We would love to hear from you. Call 1-800-491-4400 visit us at higheraim.org or write to us at Higher Aim, Post Office Box 8100, Omaha, Nebraska 68108. Thank you again for joining us. See you next time on Higher Aim. The preceding program was brought to you by the faithful supporters of Higher Aim.